Hey everyone, this is Dr. Casey Johnson. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I know you're going to love today's episode with Tracy Bess. Tracy's story is extremely inspiring, so I'm excited to have her on to share her story with you guys. If you've been loving the Unlock Wellness Podcast, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. Also, be sure to follow me on social media to keep up with the latest podcast episodes. The best way to connect with me is on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. My username across the board is at Dr. Casey Johnson. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N. You can also check out my website at drcaseyjohnson.com. It has all of the past podcast episodes and more information about each guest under the Listen tab. While you're on my site, also be sure to check out the Shop tab where you can check out my first book of my Healthy Children's Book series and learn about the Unlock Wellness Project, which supplies a wellness bag to a child in need for each book purchased. Thank you again for listening. I hope this episode leaves you feeling inspired to start making positive changes to your health. Now it's time for today's episode. I hope you love my conversation with Tracy Bess. Welcome to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I'm Dr. Casey and excited for today's guest. I'm here with Tracy Bess. And I was connected to Tracy through a podcast listener, um, actually Colleen Forrester. And, and you can go give her a follow on Instagram at it's at Red Poppy Diva. So it's R-E-D-P-O-P-P-Y-D-I-V-A. But um, you know, Colleen is actually doing some amazing things as well. She's lost like a hundred pounds on a plant-based diet. So definitely go give her a follow as well. But she connected me with Tracy. She was just raving on about her story, and I'm extremely glad that she did. So, um, yeah, so with Tracy, after years of dealing with chronic pain, depression, and inflammatory issues, she was recommended a vegan diet by a functional medicine doctor, and her life hasn't looked the same after that. You know, her, her starting weight was at 240 pounds, and today she's down about 80 pounds, weighing at 159 pounds. And She's even training for her first sprint triathlon. And um, yeah, so I'm just excited for Tracy to share her amazing journey with you guys. So Tracy, thank you so much for taking time to come on. I'm excited to have you. Well, absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to share my story with you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we'll just jump into it, Tracy, and I'll kind of walk us through what your backstory looked like, you know, how your health has progressed over time, you know, and and even like what it looked like at a younger age? Um, well, I was actually really pretty healthy, uh, really no issues. Um, it, uh, then it seemed in my 40s, things started to change just a little bit for me. Um, however, prior and uh, when I was younger, I did have a chronic history of ankle sprains to both of my ankles. And it was just something I kind of dealt with. It just happened to me all the time. But other than that, really no issues. Um, nothing. But uh, in January of 2016, I have a small farm. I was collecting eggs one evening, and it was dark, and I had stepped out of my chicken coop, carrying about six dozen eggs, and I twisted my ankle once again. This was my left ankle, and having done this numerous times, I just treated it at home. Well, that just never got better, and eight months went by of me limping and being in constant pain, and that's where my story basically starts at this point. Mm. So like, is that kind of when like the weight started to really get put on because you can't really move around like you're like just used to doing? Yeah, I mean, I was overweight at that point too, but um, the weight did certainly start, you know, uh, packing on at that point. Um, but it turned out when I finally, after eight months, went and got, uh, went to a podiatrist, I just couldn't do with the heel pain and the foot pain any longer. Um, I, uh, I was just diagnosed with plantar fasciitis. And I say that lightly, or don't say that lightly, I mean, because it's, if you've ever had it, it's, it's oh, it's, it's, it's not fun. <laughs> um, however, shortly after that, uh, we both started realizing that there was something more going on. Uh, my left foot was swollen most of the time. My lower leg was swollen most of the time. But um, I was then diagnosed with what's called tarsal tunnel syndrome in that foot. I had surgery for it in November of 2016, 
And it is a long recovery, but I did not recover well. And the weight then started packing on at that point. I mean, I was even more in more pain and more had more inability to get around at that point. And I was actually at that point um, given a handicap placard because I just I, even walking to wow. in a grocery store was just impossible for me at this point. I bet that has to be like a major just like blow to like your like, just total like hope level because like, I mean, how old were you at that time? Oh, uh, so I'm 51 now. So, you know, it's a couple of years ago. So I was 49. Yeah. I mean, um, in, in no way at an age, like at an age that should have a handicap sticker. I'm just sure like that felt like really awful. Well, it did. And because I, I'm a, I really am an active person. I don't like to sit at home and not do something. I'm always going. So it was very difficult for me, but I, I do remember that's when the depression started coming on because I was like, wow, this, my life has totally changed. And this is not the story that I was planning for myself. And that in itself feeds into wanting to eat more, um, you know, because what else are you going to do when you're sitting around? Um, So I did put on some weight and I know that um, when I I was around 230, when I finally decided I'm going to stop weighing myself, um, I just couldn't, I couldn't even, I just want, if I felt like if I didn't look at the scale, it wasn't, the number wasn't there. You know, it wasn't true, but I, I know from the, the way my clothes were fitting and the way I felt that I probably had put on about another 10 pounds. Um, that would, that would be a year ago, like April of last year. I was probably, I was at my highest and, um, that continued actually. I didn't continue to, to gain weight at that point. I was like, I'm looking at myself in pictures and deleting them when somebody would tag me on Facebook. Cause I like, I didn't even want to look at it. I, I just couldn't. Um, so I would delete these, untag myself or delete them if they're on my page. Um, and I just then at that point just started to like, you know, well, there's not a lot I can do. I really can't exercise. So let me just cut down on my portions. And I did lose some, but I was still living in chronic pain. And I was told at that point by my doctor and my surgeon that probably the only thing left for me is pain management. And again, this was just a chapter that I, I never imagined being part of my life. And I didn't want it to end that way um, or to continue. And um, by, I guess the fall of last year, yeah, for the fall of last year, um, I started hearing from somebody about an anti-inflammatory diet. So I looked into that because the swelling in my leg and my foot really was um, an issue for me. And I'm like, well, I've got to do something. And I started that with that. And that cuts out a lot of things uh, like dairy and gluten and different things. So I was already cutting those out and I started looking into doing some online um, lab ordering myself. I am a nurse, so I'm kind of familiar with what labs are. So I knew what some things that I wanted that my primary care doctor just didn't think was needed. But in my regular labs with her, um, we did happen to find out that I had a low B12 level uh, level. And my sister-in-law, who's a nurse practitioner, thought that was a little bit um, odd. And she suggested to me that I look into um, some genetic testing as well. Right. Because that's before you even went vegan, right? That, right. that was just, right. yeah. 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 This is all where, how it went up, how it got me to the point of being vegan. Right. So um, I was already cutting out the dairy and the gluten. And I went ahead and did some, I had already, I mean, cut them out for like a short period. It wasn't very long. So I went ahead and did some food sensitivity testing, um, found out that I am dairy intolerant and gluten intolerant and a couple of things. So I was like, well, I'm on the right track at least. And then the genetic testing did come back and show some genetic mutations that affect B12 and um, which also cause things like your homocysteine level to, to increase um, because of these genetic mutations. Well, I did have a very high elevated homocysteine level as well on some of the labs that I ordered. So that all led me to, um, changing my diet a little bit more. I thought, well, I'm really not because I'm cutting out the meat with the anti-inflammatory. Let me try pescatarian. I did that for a month, started seeing a functional med doctor and she's the one that said, Hey, you know what? Try this see how this works for you. And I was so close to already being vegan anyway with the stuff that I had cut out. Yeah. You just had Uh, to cut out fish then at this point. Yeah. And she suggested I cut out caffeine as well. Um, And I did. I'm not a big coffee drinker. I I drank unsweet tea here and there. So it was not that big of a deal to cut it out. And I went ahead and cut out the occasional beers as well too. 
So no alcohol, no caffeine, and cut everything out. And it really was an easy transition, quite honestly. Um, but once I made that transition, things just started changing for me. Oh, let me back up too, though. I also found out in December of last year that I do have what's called chronic venous insufficiency in my left leg, which was part of the pain and part of the inflammation that that leg was having so much trouble with. And I did have three veins ablated, a procedure done in December. But it's uh, early January, so I had uh, I switched over to vegan, and that combined with the ablations, it was like my body just was thanking me, like this is what we've been waiting for. I felt uh, not only did my leg feel better physically because I wasn't dragging around a heavy leg any longer, but my body just felt it just responded like in ways I couldn't even imagine. It was like finally it was telling me okay, thank you. This is what we've been asking for. This is the food that we've been wanting. And I'm going to reward you with so much more energy and feeling better. And the depression, um, the weight, everything just started going away. And so from, January, yeah, from January to now, the weight is basically just coming off. It, I, I can't, I don't even feel like I'm dieting. I'm just, right. it's a lifestyle. Right. And like, you don't feel deprived. Like you don't, you know, it's like, you know, you put the right foods in and then your body like doesn't have to spend the extra energy trying to process like all of the chemicals and artificial like junk. It can actually use the food as energy, use the food to help your body heal. Like your body wants to help you heal and it wants to help you, um, you know, thrive, but you just have to (laughs) give it exactly what it needs. That's exactly how I describe it when people ask me. It's just, it's again, I swear, my body is just saying, thank you, thank you. This is exactly what I need. Yeah. And people tell me, oh, I don't think I could ever do that. I couldn't give this up or I couldn't give that up. And, you know, and I feel, and I, I'll try to encourage them or they'll say, oh, I have this problem where I can't seem to lose the weight. You know, I, I still try to encourage everybody to, to try something, you know, make one change. I know I'm not says, saying you have to go vegan, but you know, cut out the processed food or, um, you know, cut down on the sugar or cut it out um, because your body doesn't need those things. Right. Or just eat less of those things. Like maybe have a few days a week where you don't have any animal products. And I mean, like, and you know, you, and I, and I get everybody's at different parts of their journey. And like, I always respect that and like love everybody regardless of, you know, of of what they decide to, to do with that. But like, but with you, it's really cool because like you were a chicken farmer. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do raise chickens. Yeah. Um, and honestly, that was probably the hardest. I didn't even think of that until you brought that up. Um, that was probably the chicken eggs um, from my own hens was probably the hardest thing for me to give up. And quite honestly, when I was going vegan, I thought, you know what, I might just continue eating my own, my own hens eggs. I won't eat the ones from store bought or somewhere else because I don't know how these chickens were raised and uh, loved for and cared for. And I don't really want to um, do that, but I might continue eating mine. So I went a few weeks without having any eggs. And then my husband uh, one morning made some breakfast and he made eggs and he wasn't really remembering that I was vegan at this point because it was so still new, you know. Um, and I was, I didn't want to tell him, no, oh, honey, I don't want to eat that. It was so nice of him to make breakfast. I went ahead and ate the eggs with breakfast. And after I ate them, I was like, I don't miss these, you know. Yeah. So um, I went ahead and gave them up at that point, but I do have chickens and I do still, um, love my chickens very much. So, and they still lay eggs every day, whether or not I'm vegan or not. So, um, I uh, make sure that people who do still eat eggs have good quality eggs. Right. So they're, they're basically like loving pets, family members. Oh, now, right? <laughs> they're spoiled, spoiled. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> that's just, that's just so cool. So like, I mean, obviously you said that you started to, your body started to thank you. You started feeling great. The depression went away and obviously the weight has dropped like crazy. Um, you know, with, with so much chronic pain that you were having in the legs and, and the ankles and obviously losing that much weight is also going to assist with that as well. But like, um, I mean, you obviously started to run, like, did you, did that, how quickly were you able to start running or was it just like you had to walk a few months and then we just started gradually increasing that? Yeah, uh, well, let's see. I was started walking in December, um, you know, just because I was starting to feel a little bit better just because of the, the diet change, eating the fish and whatnot, and dropping a bunch of the, the gluten and all the processed stuff and the dairy and all that. 
Um, but by early January, um, I was, I met, actually it was Colleen and several other friends out at a park. It was a, like a New Year's Day, might have been the second or third. Um, let's start the year off on the right foot type walk. So we all meant to go on this short walk and uh, we did. And I stayed, I felt like, you know what? I feel like I need to walk a little bit further. So I stayed after everybody left. And I was on this beautiful trail and I was like, this guy passed me that was running. And a few minutes later, I thought, man, I don't, I wish I could run. I don't think I could ever run again. And I hadn't run in years just because of the ankle problems. And something said, give it a try, do a couple steps, see if you can do it. And it was very awkward. Um, but I did it and I called my husband and I literally cried on the phone to him. I said, I can't believe I just did this. I'm going to cry again. <laughs> it really was very emotional for me. Um, and so that just led to, well, let's walk some more. Let's walk faster when you walk and let's try running every time you walk. Maybe it's just a few steps that, so that was January. Uh, it quickly, quickly evolved to me doing a 5k, uh, uh, in early February. Mm -hmm. Now I did not run the whole thing, but I did run probably half of it. Um, yes. So, and then that just, it took off from there. I have done four since then and I run daily. Now I run three miles every day now. That's so awesome. And the ankles are good. Fine. Fine. I ran my longest distance on Sunday, this last Sunday, um, I ran eight miles with the girls group and they're marathon runners, half marathon runners. I mean, they, and I'm like, guys, I'm probably going to be slow. I don't want to slow you down. They're like, no, 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 we're good. You're good. So I ran eight miles with them and my ankle was a little stiff after. So it was a good reminder of, okay, you know, don't overdo it. But uh, my goal is to every Sunday they do usually around 10 to 14 miles. My goal is to hopefully this Sunday hang with them for the full distance. We'll see. That's awesome. Yeah, it's just, you know, I mean, it's just all like just the progression. And I mean, eight miles is amazing. Like that's, that's just so great. I mean, especially like when you think about where your life was at a year ago, like today, you know, it's like, it's completely different. I mean, could you had ever imagined at that point that you'd be at this point, like right now, like it's just, it just blows my mind. No. And I, I said that last week to my husband. I said, you know, if somebody had told me that, that I was registered to do a, a sprint triathlon and a half marathon, I, I wouldn't have believed them. I'd be like, there's no way. There's absolutely no way. I can't even run. So to be, it, it's just amazing. It, it, yes, I have a hard time believing it myself. There's days that um, I'm scared that somehow, some way it's going to all be pulled out from under me, that I'm going to have another ankle injury or something's going to happen. Um, but I try not to dwell on that. And I enjoy every single day that I have been given this gift back and not look, not worry about that. I love that. And like, how, how's the training been going for your, cause it's coming up. That's, uh, yeah. The sprint triathlon is, uh, coming up on, uh, well, uh, May 12th. So, um, it's going well. Um, so it, it's tough. Uh, it's going well though. It's not an open water, it, and it is shorter distances since it's a sprint triathlon. Um, it's basically a bucket list thing for me. If I do this and I'm like, you know what, one and done, I'm good. Um, that's great. But and if I decide I want to do more, that that's great too. So I'm just looking forward and and to celebrating the fact that I've regained health that I didn't have a year ago. Right, and obviously, and in, in the process of training for it, like you're obviously increasing your, your health and increasing, um, you know, your endurance and like just becoming more healthy just with the training. Cause I mean, it's forcing you to get out there and swim and bike and run. And like, you know, it, it kind of, it's a nice way to have to switch up the workouts. Right. Right. And it, it's helped when I switched, uh, just from running to cross training, mm -hmm. uh, like the swimming especially has really helped with my breathing, with my running that quickly, I was surprised how fast that changed. Yeah. Um, quite quickly. But yes, uh, the, and not only um, do I physically and, and mentally feel better um, with my functional med doctor, we have been doing labs frequently and we're seeing, I mean, amazing changes. My cholesterol was really, I would say really high. Um, and I have come down 80 points on my total cholesterol. Wow. Just from this going vegan. That's so crazy. That's, that's just amazing. Like, I think it's super powerful to like 
I mean, obviously when you see the before after pictures and like you do really well at posting the process on Instagram, which I think is super important because then you can reach so many people and inspire them that it's doable. Um, but then whenever you back it up with like the numbers, um, it's super important to like share that aspect as, as well, because like, then it's like, Oh, well, are they really doing this, this, this? It's like, well, here's, <laughs> here's all the numbers. Like you can see obviously in the pictures. And I just think it's really cool. Like I've talked to so many amazing people that this, the, the changes that they get in such a quick amount of time, I mean, it, it really is doable. And like, um, so I love it. So, I mean, just amazing job, you know, with your posting on Instagram, like how have you found that connect, like connecting with people on social media has helped encourage you like just forming that community well it really has when i hear from somebody either they'll uh, send me a message um, or they'll reply to something that i've posted and they'll say you've really inspired me um thank you for this and i had a lady i think it was a week ago or so that said just following you you my daughter and i have decided we've started walking every day and we're doing this and it just it, it, it encourages me it makes me get out there um, this morning, the weather is really not ideal to be running today. And I, I, I had an internet installer coming out and he's like, I need to run out and go get another bit for, I'm going to go to Home Depot. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go run down the street and I'll be back. And I'm thinking, just do a mile, just do a mile. It's really muggy and hot. And, and I think about what those people then tell me how they've been inspired. And I'm like, just keep going, just keep yeah. going. And there's a lot of things that in my head that play back. Um, I'll tell other people, you know, just do it, no excuses. And then my husband's real good at reminding me when he's training with me, he'll say, if I want to give up or I'm like, I can't go anymore, I need to stop or slow down. They'll say, you birthed four boys, you can do this. <laughs> <laughs> he's really good at reminding me that. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. That's like the biggest marathon there is. Right. <laughs> After that, you can do anything. You're set. Right. Yeah. So, no, it really does give you like just that level of accountability and like, just yeah just the drive just because it's not about you anymore it's about really just changing as many lives as you can because with obviously with social media that's an unlimited amount of people yeah and that's my goal I, I I decided when I was first losing weight I wasn't I mean I when I went vegan I told everybody I was going vegan and then um when I first started losing weight I wasn't sharing it really and then I was like why am I not sharing this and I knew why is because I I didn't like still like the number on the scale even though it was going down and I said, you know what? I think I would feel a whole lot better if I just came clean with it and I shared it. It was very empowering for me to finally say, you know what? This is my weight. And here's what I'm doing. And I, I think it's helped others. And it, I prefer being transparent with that. You know, and if I have a, a week where I lose very little, you know, that, that's fine. Um, and if there's a, if, I, if you have a week where you don't lose, that's fine too. Just keep moving forward, and I just want to encourage people to not give up. Absolutely, absolutely. And like, what were some of the resources that like really helped you this this past year? Just learning as much as possible. Like, you know, for people that are listening that maybe are in the same situation, like, what do you recommend that they just go check out as far as like resources? Um, as far as going vegan, um, there's a lot of good Facebook groups, um, and then there's a lot of good Instagram uh, accounts if you look out there. Um, you know, that's, I would start with those. If you don't have anybody personally that you know that you can reach out to, um, I thankfully had Colleen <laughs> who was vegan for, I, I guess she's going on two years or has reached two years at this point. So, you know, I had her as a resource. Um, and so just following that in Facebook pages, um, and I'm good at Googling, so, um, <laughs> There are several good apps out there that I highly recommend too, because there's a lot of vegan foods that aren't labeled vegan um, that you just have to learn that are actually vegan. So there's an app called Is It Vegan? Um, it's, but I'm sure it's available on Android and iOS. Um, and then as far as the gluten-free, I use one too, uh, similar. I, at this minute, can't remember the name of it. And it basically scans barcodes and it tells you if it has gluten or if, it ha if it's a vegan item. But, you know, people do have to be careful because there are vegan foods out there. It surprised me to learn this that um, are not very healthy and you should stay away from them if your goal is to increase your health or lose weight, but like Oreos are vegan. <laughs> right. Oh, I think Skittles are even vegan. I'm, I'm, I'm sure most, you know, I'm sure like 
there's a good amount of candy that that is vegan that yeah so yeah it's just yeah. aware of like you know what is that what is the source of that food like is it straight sugar because obviously you know that's not an animal product so obviously and, but you know like and it's some of that's common sense it's like no like that an oreo is not going to make me healthier and like right. things like that yeah and just be super cautious of like what's the actual source of it and um get really good at just looking at the ingredients really quick or using an app like the one you mentioned, I, I actually haven't checked that out. So I'm going to, I'm going to check that app out. It's a great app. Uh, occasionally you'll get something that comes up that it, it's not sure of, but just, you can do a good job reading the um, labels. And if you're not sure that, like I said, there are several good, I'll, I've taken pictures of labels and posted on a few Facebook groups to, Hey, anybody know for sure if this is a vegan item? And uh, I usually quickly get a reply back if it's something I don't know. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. And yeah, Tracy, you know, is there, I know we mentioned your, um, your, your sprint triathlon's coming up super soon and then your half marathon like, is there anything else that you're working on in the future that you just want to put out there and share or just continue to put out really awesome content about your journey and just reach as many people as possible? Yeah, I just want to continue to share my journey. Um, you know, and we'll see what happens after the sprint triathlon. Like I said, if I decided to to look into doing another one. Um, the half marathon is not till October. Uh, so continue to train for that. Uh, my goal for 2019 is to do a full marathon. And at that point, I don't have any goals past that other than to continue um, my health and wellness journey and um, encouraging others to find theirs. That's amazing. I love that. And Tracy, I know we, we've been mentioning like Instagram and Facebook a lot. So what is the best way for people to follow you on social media? Um, at this point, my Instagram and my Facebook are the same name. Um, and I honestly am kind of contemplating a name change. Um, and I haven't decided if I'm going to do that or not, because when I initially started out, I, I wasn't in this chapter in my life. So, and I've just left it because it's, they've been that a part of my life, but I'm thinking of a name change, at least on Instagram, Facebook won't let me change it because it's over a certain amount of followers. Um, but on Instagram and Facebook, currently it is the farmhouse renovations. And, uh, I do have a, a website where I put up recipes very rarely now because I'm just so busy, but it's the farmhouse renovations.com. Um, but that's where people can find me if they're interested in, in looking for me. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And then Tracy, just closing question that I ask every guest, but if you just had one piece of advice for the audience, maybe it's been your biggest takeaway through your whole journey so far, but if you just had one piece of advice to give, what would it be? You can do this. That, I mean, honestly, you can do this. It, it is not as difficult of a journey as you think it is. It's not going to be easy, but it's not as difficult. Making the decision to do it and doing it every day is the hardest part of it. Once you get past, I really feel like once you get past three weeks of doing something for the same thing every day, then it starts to become part of your normal routine. Um, so stick with it, keep doing it. If you mess up, you know what? It's okay. You got tomorrow. It doesn't mean you've ruined everything you worked so hard for. Absolutely. No, that's perfect, Tracy. And just thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing your story. I know you're going to help change so many lives just by sharing your own journey. And just, I'm just excited to continue to watch your progress and can't wait to see how your races go. It's going to be awesome. Awesome. I will definitely post it. Um, I am not looking for, I'm not looking to be super competitive. This is a, a, a challenge for my body and a reward to myself for um, what everything I've worked for. And uh, I'm just enjoying looking forward to having fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. But Tracy, just thank you so much for coming on. I really enjoyed having you. I enjoyed it so much, Casey. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you loved my conversation with Tracy. Her story is so inspiring and she's really helping a lot of people. So be sure to give her a follow on social media to keep up with everything that she's been working on. You can find her social media links that we talked about in the episode in the show notes, but you can also find them on my website as well at drcaseyjohnson.com. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N.com. Click on the Listen tab. Then from there, you'll be able to see all of the past guests that have come on the Unlock Wellness podcast, read a little bit about each guest, and be able to click on their social media links, websites, all of that. So all of Tracy's information can be found on my site as well. If you guys loved today's episode with Tracy, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. 
It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you loved it. I hope it inspires you. And most importantly, I hope you take action. Whoa.